Hello everybody, it's Dazel here with another video. Today I want to take the time and talk about the Undead King again because there are still a few things that I'd like to point out when it comes to playing this event and how you can optimize your points when it comes to this. It became very hard for me to compare points of five attacks to another five attacks as I did in older videos of mine where I did this a comparison when I had my Kellet Witch on the third star and then on the fourth star and it was it was good when I was checking it out back then but now it is a bit hard and in today's video I just want to talk about some optimizations that you can do before you do the Undead King attacks. First of all, you always want to play in your strongest gear, mostly in those gear parts that have damage increased when attacking, as it is the most efficient one when you are attacking the Undead King. Then, depending on the current nemesis, you want to adjust your achievements. Due to the fact that we have the Mage Nemesis currently, it is, for me, currently the best thing to go for the Buildmaster the Iron Lion for maximum frontline HP here, then the Warlord for increased attack of archers and mages, and in addition to that also mage HP by 6%. And then we have the Persistent with the attack boost in general for all troops. Before you want to do this one, you can compare it to my preparing for Void War video. You can also go and check out all of the small improvements that you can still do in, for example, here in the totems. What I, for example, can do just because of I, or just because of me finishing some quests today, is I can do this improvement here that will help my cavalry take less damage. 0.3, sure sounds like nothing but in the end it adds up and so i will do this upgrade before i will jump into the undead king then when we come to the beast skills you could also check back if there is any of the player versus environment skills for example the life source that you could still give an upgrade i personally don't invest into the life source anymore but for example here with the attack expert but i'm too far away from another level up here which is why I will just leave it like that. But what I want to say is always check back if you could do an upgrade here. And in the best case, you can still compare it or combine it with events like the Hardest Secret Order, where you could find quests where you need to spend Beast Skill EXP, for example. Then we come to the artifacts, and this is always a part where I really have to check back with the current nemesis. I am... And due to the fact that we have the Mage Nemesis, I will keep my Muramasa equipped because of Mage Attack, HP, Cavalry, HP and Mage Damage. I will play with a formation that includes only Cavalry and Mages and then one of each as Meat Shields. But then I would have to think about if I want to play with the uh, Mjolnir, which would give the relevant playing troops that I have only the attack boost. On the other hand, I could also play with the... A grizzly artifact here because of the attack boost and then the cavalry attack. I will play with the grizzly this time simply because of the fact that the 1.4% attack boost, which the Mjolnir, for example, has more than the grizzly right now, will get com uh, will get compensated by the fact that I will get another 11% of cavalry attack here. So this is going to be my array for the mage nemesis. Then I will quickly rush over. Always equip your best gear parts. You can also check if you can do another uh, obsidian upgrade, but I don't have enough steel. I know that for now. Check your beast skills, check your artifacts. And now we will come to the most time consuming part for the players that don't have a monthly card. It is about the Colossus. This adjustment will take some time, but it can make a huge difference when you are playing this event. What will we go for now? I mostly try to play with two level 90 Colossi due to the uh, third skill here, the damage increased against cavalry boost and against uh, or for the reduces damage taken from archers boost. What we will do now is we will reset both of these Colossi and we will build a new one where we will only focus to get the maximum effort or to get the maximum output out of the first three skills for those units 
to get the level 70 skill, the attack boost, and from the mages the HP boost, because we don't need any player versus player oriented skills like the level 90 skill for now. So we can just optimize the level 70 Colossus into the first three skills. As the last three skills here, the less damage taken from things, for example, uh, aren't relevant for our um, for our fight against the Undead King. So what we will definitely do is we will bring our Mage Attack to the maximum here, as this has the most impact today. And then what I like to do, as this is the first time I'm doing a 70-70 Colossus again, I will now invest into my cavalry for, for the first time or for now as HP and attack will be more relevant than for example the mage HP. So this is why I will first bring all of these here to level 15. And yep, we will also advance that. And from here we will quickly do some normal fortifies. Yeah, I think level 20 is okay. And here, why not? This, this. All right, now we have that. Now we are at 60 here. And I guess for now we will continue here with the Mage Colossus first. Just want to make sure that I don't have to reset again. But uh, you're probably getting what I'm saying here. I'm trying to get 70-70 just with the first three skills as this will have the most impact on or the best impact for the run. All right, we don't have enough ancient relics left. So we will need to do a few levels in here. But that's fine for now for me personally. So here we have our 70 Colossus for Mages now. Maximum focus on the Mage attack. Then we have Mage HP and Mage Defense at level 15. So we have the HP boost unlocked. And back at the Cavalry tree we can now also activate it as our second Colossus. And now we can, yeah, we can still do one into HP. And then the remaining few we will pump into just a few of these side skills here. And after the Undead King, I will build my old one again anyways. So now we have 70-70 from the level and we have the attack boost enabled too. And here from our Mage Colossus, we have the HP boost. Now they are completely optimized to fight against the environment like the Undead King for example. And now we can, yeah, basically jump into it what you then can still do, but that always depends on your budget, you can go for the uh, buffs. I like to use the 1 hour 15% buffs and my fast expansion here. And that is usually what I use for events. I don't use anything else, but that's usually enough for me. As always, always make sure to play the uh, Evil Tyrant once you are completely buffed up and ready. And yep, yeah, nice points. And then we can get going and do some Undead King attacks here. For the formation, it always depends on the current nemesis and what your usual troop focus is. Due to the fact that mages are the current nemesis, I will just send one angel here. I will send both of the front lines now as I have no priority in defending my angels in any way. And then I will just max it out with mages. This is how we are going to play it. Always make sure to bring your beast and the correct totem. I just did the upgrade for the auto totem. Also yesterday I upgraded the skill to level three. I will play with 100K of my strongest cavalry and one of each. And then I will continue with the mages as we are currently having the mage nemesis. This is the way how I personally max out my points for events like this. This way I am, um, yep. Yeah, performing at my best. And yeah, let's see how many points we can get out of it. 6.9 It is yeah, pretty okay, I think. We have so many strong players nowadays in our kingdom that 
it barely has an impact, but currently I would be ranked in somewhere, yeah, top 20, I'd say, if the points stay like that. But there you also have to say, uh, or have to keep in mind, that we are still playing for another seven hours roundabout and people then uh, can still kick me out of the top 30. But yeah, top 50 should be no problem at all. There we have another one, this time with seven. Also dope. Quick formation check here. You can see the infantry gets attacked first. Then he continues with the angels and then he continues with my cavalry. And while that, my mages are doing a great job. Pretty long lasting fight here. And especially in scenarios like that, I like to have the Muramasa also for the additional mage HP. Otherwise I would maybe deal a bit more damage with another artifact, although I don't think that I have any other artifact that I would like to replace. Yeah, I could playing, I could be playing with the Mjolnir for the additional attack boost, but it doesn't compensate the mage attack and the mage damage from the Muramasa, so that's definitely optimized here. And now I will just keep going for the final attacks here, 7.1 this time, nice, it's scaling up. Always depending on the dodge triggers. So um, yeah, this is what I meant in the beginning. It's really hard to say, okay, this is a, we compare before and after. It's never that easy with a formation like that. While I'm buffed up, I could go for cool star runes attack. Let's quickly see if we find any good target here. Anywhere. Mm. 7.9. Four hundred K six. Oh no, that's our kingdom. We don't attack our own kingdom in the star runes. I don't know if you do the same. And yeah, I will first attack the under king again. And six point nine, all right. I'd like to find target in here. That's a bit too much. That also. This one looks okay. And we have our. How's it called again? Why can't I attack? Okay, now it worked. Okay, against another cavalry player and he's definitely crushing me. You were able to see from his angel count that it is yeah, pretty huge. And he started with, I think, 124k of angels. So I didn't stand a chance too bad. But yeah, we can quickly take a look into the report again. And yeah, fire totem level 114, skill level 8. Cavalry player, very strong one, holy smokes. This one looks really powerful. And don't forget, I mean, I, you probably would have crushed me anyways, but I am playing with a player versus environment colossus. I don't, I'm missing a lot of technology there. Gotta keep that in mind. But yeah, all right, so 6.8, here we have 7.0, pretty dope. Is yeah, I think that can be pretty good currently. If that's keep scaling like that, it might be at around uh, rank 20, 25 there. 6.9 again. We have three attacks remaining. So, overall, guys, this is how you can optimize your points for the Undead King. Don't be intimidated because of my final ranking. I think it's still pretty good. And we have to keep in mind that we have done several mergers with our kingdoms. We are merged with a lot of different alliances that have very strong players. So I'm really happy if I end up in the top 30, maybe top 50 in the end. And yeah, in the end still, it is really a lot about resetting your Colossus. You can get a lot done there and a lot of impact. Imagine, before I would have probably played with level 15 mage attack. I think that's at like 10% or something like that. I don't really remember how much attack that gives. 
but it can make a huge impact. So especially for the players of yours that are still in a very young kingdom, this can really have a big impact on your ranking and you should consider doing it. It might be a bit time consuming, but when you have the monthly card unlocked, you can do a lot of different presets that would make it way easier. And then you are good to go. We'll do another attack. Then we can see where I would currently rank finally. And then this video will be over. So stay tuned for another 15 seconds. And here we go. Last attack. And after that, I can skill back to my level 90, 90 Colossus in the best way possible to be able to have better results in the Star Ruins than this time. But as I was saying, also a very strong player. Great tech there. All right, we ended up with another 7.1 hit. And that will bring us to a final ranking of 25. Nice. I'm happy with that. And overall, I hope you enjoyed this video. And then I would say see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.